Now that we have identified our targets and prioritized amongst them, we need to design strategies that will ensure their conservation. How do we go about doing this? At the species and site scales, we come up with actions based on the local context. This includes information on the needs of trigger species, the threats to the site, and the needs of local people. Gathering such information may require additional field research. We work with relevant stakeholders in selecting these actions and use tools from various disciplines. By doing so, we hope to promote local ownership of conservation strategies and to encourage implementation of these strategies by local partners. At the landscape scale, our goal is to integrate conservation with development. We aim to ensure that development needs of local people are met in a way that ensures the persistence of threatened species, the protection of KBAs, and the continued functioning of ecosystem processes. Accomplishing this is complex, to say the least. It requires the latest analytical approaches, combined with an in-depth knowledge of the regions where we work. Think again of the frog from the previous example. First, we might need to conduct field research to determine the main threats. We may find that, in addition to pollution from runoff, the frog is threatened by disease. Research on disease and captive breeding may be needed. Within the KBA, we may need to replant vegetation on the shores of the lake to serve as a buffer. At the landscape scale, we could work with landowners to minimize runoff, perhaps through organic agroforestry projects. Conservation actions include a wide range of activities, such as conducting research, establishing protected areas, improving legislation, supporting institutional capacity, and enhancing law enforcement. We also work to provide economic incentives for communities to conserve biodiversity. It is important to mention that not all KBAs are, or should be, protected areas. While the formal protection of KBAs is extremely important in many cases, it is not always the most effective means of conservation. Similarly, not all protected areas are KBAs since they do not all contain significant numbers of KBA trigger species.